it's gonna be one of those days. Hey everyone, it's Jason from GameRave.com, otherwise known as Danger Boy, and this is GameRave TV. Alright guys, so in a couple of weeks we are going to have Avengers 2, The Age of Ultron, and I figured it would be a great time to discuss Marvel games on the PlayStation. Now, when I first started researching this episode, I was actually very surprised. Um, out of a library of over 1,200 games on the PlayStation, there's only 14 Marvel games. And of the 14, there's only really like 6 licenses. It's really weird. Um, and as I said in my one Twitter post, um, these can range from really bad to absolutely amazing. Um, even the same license could have two completely different games as far as quality goes. So, let's get to it. Heading into our list alphabetically, we'll start with Blade. Now, Blade was a movie with Wesley Snipes about vampires and the human vampire and all that fun stuff. Um, as far as the PlayStation game goes, it's actually really good. Um, it's an action-adventure game, you've got different combat systems, all that good stuff. Um, it's a little rough around the edges uh, as far as certain, like, controls go, but if you can get past that, it's actually a pretty solid game with a very good graphic quality. Alright, next up on the list is Fantastic Four. Now, the Fantastic Four game on the PlayStation had nothing to do with any of the movies that came out for it, um, which is good because the game... The game's laughably bad. In fact, from a crucial journalistic standpoint, the Fantastic Four game is, for lack of a better term, a piece of shit. Like, that's all there is to it. However, in going back to it for a project I've been working on for a while, um, it's salvageable. Like, it's not as broken as, say, Alone in the Dark, but it's not even decent quality like the guilty pleasure that Batman Arcade is. Um, if you are looking for this game, you are buying it because you're either A, a Fantastic Four fan and have to have everything, B, you're a Marvel fan and have to have everything, or C, you are masochistic to a level I cannot appreciate. Next up is the big green guy, and I don't mean the green screen. Uh, Incredible Hulk the Pantheon Saga. Uh, decent game. You could tell at the time that people were still trying to figure out like how to do 3D and 2D and move on and what so forth, because it's got the pixelated uh, sprites and everything. Eh, decent game. Not really worth it. Eventually, it's, it's, it's so many levels of Hulk smash. That's all there is to it. Next up is Iron Man, Exo Manowar, and Heavy Metal. Quite possibly the laziest game design you'll ever see. It's basically two stiff cutouts of Iron Man X of Man of War walking left, firing a horizontal beam to some B-rated heavy metal music. I played about a level and just didn't care. Ah, now we get to the good stuff. Marvel Superheroes by Capcom. Uh, basically, Street Fighter with Marvel characters. Um, gorgeous Japanese-style art. A um, lot of cool exaggerations, little details and so forth. Um, excellent combat system. Um... Full disclosure, I never really read a lot of comic books when I was a kid. Um, I mean, I, I like, and by comic books, I mean, like, Spider-Man, etc. I was always a Transformers, G.I. Joe kid, a little bit of Robocop here and there. Um, I did uh, read the Infinity Gauntlet, which I love, and the reason I love Marvel superheroes so much is because it's based on the Infinity Gauntlet. Full disclosure, cannot wait for the Infinity Wars movie. If you have never played Marvel superheroes, you need to play it. Um... It's one of the best fighting games Capcom ever did, simply because instead of just being another Street Fighter clone, they actually incorporated the power gems into the game. Um, each gem gave you different abilities, um, like time, speed, all that good stuff. Definitely play it. Totally worth tracking down. All right, now we get to a little bit of a ee moment in gaming history. Um, alphabetically, the next game is Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter. This is actually a sequel to X-Men vs. Street, uh, Street Fighter, which was in of itself a sequel to X-Men Children of the Atom. Now, why are we at this pause? Because despite Marvel Super Heroes and X-Men vs. Street Fighter both being amazing arcade games and Japanese import games, um, when the games came to the PlayStation, Capcom ran into a little bit of a problem, and that was the system's RAM. Um, in Japan, these games were released with a little add-on at the end called EX. So it was X-Men vs. Street Fighter EX Edition. And what the EX was referencing was the fact that you couldn't swap characters like you could in the arcade. You basically had one character and a helper character. And when the games came to America, Capcom of America kind of sort of left that little EX part off. And a lot of people went in to buy this arcade game for their PlayStation. When they got home, realized they couldn't do what made the arcade game so cool. Um, that being said, X-Men vs. Street Fighter, uh, 
it's really rough. Um, it's still a playable game, but there's just so many animation frames missing, and um, like you can tell it's just not the game it was from the arcade. When Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter came to the system, uh, Capcom got a little bit better in the compression and, you know, trying to get things, shoehorn things in there and did what the best they could with the swapping trick, uh, where as long as both players pick the same two characters, you could then do the cross battle and so forth. Um, if you have an import Saturn, definitely track down those versions instead. Um, the PlayStation ones, as long as you go in realizing it's not the arcade game you wanted, uh, kind of like Street Fighter the movie, uh, they're still playable and great, especially the fact that you can cancel your super moves into each other. But if you're looking for the actual arcade experience, not going to happen. On a happier note, uh, Marvel uh, vs. Capcom uh, on the PlayStation is actually a really good game. Um, it still had its problems here and there, just like the aforementioned ones. But you, I will forgive shortcomings in a game if you can tell the developer tried their damnedest to get that game up and running on the system. And... Well, the better version of this game is on the Dreamcast. If all you have is a PlayStation, it's still a really good version. Um, and of course, you know, the obligatory... Let's go crazy! Let me move on. Next on the list was actually a surprise, because I didn't realize it was a Marvel license, uh, is Men in Black. Um, the game on the PlayStation uh, is actually based off the cartoon show. Um, I unfortunately did have never really had a chance to play this game, um, so I can't really discuss it much, but I have to add it to the list anyway just because it's a Marvel game. Um, the movies are really cool though, so it's all good. Uh, next up on the list are two amazing games for the PlayStation and ha both have significant um, historical angles and that's Spider-Man 1 and 2. Uh, now Spider-Man is historically significant because this was the first true superhero game created for a console that really made the industry stand up and go, wow, you you, you can make really good our superhero games? Like it's not just a license cash-in? Um, just excellent writing. Um, Activision did took kind, of, kind of took a Tony Hawk angle with the collectibles, with the comic book covers, and so forth. Um, just solid gameplay. A lot of good things Spidey can do with his abilities and so forth. And from there into Spider-Man Two, and then once the PlayStation uh, Two had come into play, um, that gave you one of the first open world games with a superhero, and it was just an amazing, amazing good start for Spidey and crew. That leads into Spider-Man 2. Now, Spider-Man 2 is historically significant because it was one of the two games on the PlayStation that was recalled uh, due to 9-11. Um, right before the game was about to be released, um, there are references to New York in the game, as well as uh, level titles that, pre-9-11, no one would have cared. Um, however, in being, I wouldn't want to say politically correct because that sounds negative, but in being um, aware of the situation with 9-11, uh, Activision recalled all the discs from the printing plant, or at least tried to because some of us have a copy. Um, long story short, all they really did was is um, the final battle took place on the Twin Towers, and Activision instead remap them with textures and add a bridge so instead of looking like two towers it looked like a completely different single building um and then they changed a couple of level titles and slightly edited one of the videos to remove the reference to the twin towers um the game is still amazing and it, regardless of the censorship and so forth it didn't really affect the game it was based just like i said like they were so minuscule in changes that it shouldn't be a historically significant issue but it is because of what's tied to um but both are excellent games definitely play them check it out all right guys that leaves us with the x-men games uh both mutant academy one and two and x-men children of the atom now we'll start with children of the atom first um this game w came out for the saturn originally and then just kind of fell off the radar for the playstation version um it ended up releasing much much later um and uh... It's not as bad as it could have been, all things considered, but it's so inferior to the Saturn version, it's not even funny. Um, if you have both systems, just grab the Saturn version, it's much, much better. Uh, however, X-Men uh, Mutant Academy 1 and 2 are actually really good fighting games. Um, they are 2D games with 3D graphics, and their combat system's a little bit different from your typical Street Fighter or, you know, Mortal Kombat clone, but once you get into the groove, it's actually really good. Also interesting is if you do like the uh, live-action movies, you can actually use the original movie costumes in X-Men Mutant Academy 1. All right, guys, that does it for our Marvel episode. Um, 
just a whole bunch of, of some really cool games, some little bit of stinkers here and there. Uh, really easy collection to collect for if you're looking to grab all of them. Um, a couple of them could be a little pricey, but nothing bad. Uh, that being said, we'll see you next time on pause mode. And if I don't see you at the theaters, enjoy the movie. We'll see you guys later. Take care.